want it to be at least wet and it was dry and hot so just one of those years man that's how it goes with farming you we have good years you have bad years we were due a drought and it hit us so i'm hoping the beans will knock it out of the park enough that it'll make up for the bad part but this is why we have crop insurance so hopefully it'll it'll cover us i think y'all may can see the back of my dad's combine up there <laughs> corn is filthy his combine is black on the back up there and that thing was pressure washed he shelled probably i don't know 200 acres of corn or so and the thing is black just it's crazy how dirty corn is we arrived Woo! there's like a lot of racket there yeah look at the back of this combine look how dirty it is it's crazy that corn is filthy See how black that is? That combine's green. It's supposed to be shiny. There's the corn. No clue what to expect. I mean, I'll tell you what I'm expecting. I'm expecting probably about 40 or 50 bushels, as much as I hate to say that. But that's what I'm kind of foreseeing happen. He's on forward there, bro. I'm gonna let Logan get off the road. I think I can back up in this hole between these trees and get you to back up. Um, it's just... I think you can hold it right there, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have great expectations for it, but... You know, hey, who knows? It is what it is. You can't, like I said, you can't make it rain. We can only do what we can do, and that's all. So... I'm going to park here out of the way. He'll get his header on, cut us a spot out. And dead gummit, I've, I have said it before. I'll say it again. Why John Deere made the 670 so slow? This is, I'm in my 680. The 680 will do 23.5 or something miles per hour, almost 24 miles an hour. That 670, it will only do 16 and a half miles an hour. It is the slowest thing I've ever been behind. I don't understand it. Why, John Deere? I just want to know. I just want to understand. Hey,
the coolest features on this combine, in my opinion, is this folding hopper. Like you'll notice my dad's over there. Those extensions, they fold down manually. You have to get in there and pull them. It's a real pain in the butt. This one's automatic, or not automatic. It's done in the cab. I'll let you see what that looks like. If you ever wondered kind of how the magic happens in a combine, I'll show you a quick little rundown of it. So this is our, our controls here. I got this monitor here, which is essentially the same as what this one's telling me, but my guidance runs through this one. Straight track. It's really no point in me turning it on because I, corn, I don't have the, the sensors in the rows on this header. So it's not sensing the row. So I don't use the GPS auto track on here. I forgot my iPad, but I normally would have my iPad here and I'd be mapping out the farm, but I'm not really worried about it because we got two combines here today. They're not paired up on field view, so it doesn't really help me. Um, but this one kind of tells me, you know, it's got my settings, my rotor, fan speed, sheave uh oh my concave uh sheave and con no i can't remember but shows me all my settings here here's how we turn it on so this is the separator that's the main that's the main meat and potato of the combine flip that one on combine kind of you hear it roar up look at this the dust coming out of there uh this one switches on the header so it'll come on and this is our throttle. That's slow, mid-speed, wide open. You run it wide open. Look at that dust roll out of there. I mean, that is just, that's how dusty corn is. You wonder why these combines get so dirty, that is why. But you can see into the hopper here. I believe on corn, this combine will hold about 400 bushels of corn, which is a pretty dead gum good bit but you can see all our settings here now I'm running pretty much what the machine sets they have presets and they're supposed to be done to be the most efficient again I have no real expectations for this place but two I guess I'll explain that too this is how you drive a combine this is a full crash course this is where your your forwards to go forward you move it backwards to go backwards. One raises it, two is gonna put it down. Three is if it's like there's some thick vegetation or the corn is really short, you press three and it puts the header all the way down pretty much. Like you can adjust your height here. That's where you set how high and low it is. I've got number two set pretty much at the top because in decent corn, you want to run it high, that's less stuff having to go through the header, less stuff going through the combine, etc. So, here we go. This header has Contour Master and all that stuff on there, which basically is just the way it flexes. Left or right, tilts would be the better word. Uh, okay, we're going to get off the road. This is going to be a little weird because I came in and replanted some of this corn. I don't like being off a row on the outside there. This is a decal 6599. It's definitely not a good good test year. I I have had the 6599 before and it is really bad to the bone corn. I planted it planted some last year and it shelled in the 200s. Crazy. And some people don't believe me here, but I actually even had some that was shelling into the the low 300s. I've got a video on my phone of it shelling about 315 for just a little while. Like it wasn't, it didn't average that, but it did average about 200 bushel, which is phenomenal in our area. So, I'm gonna try to run 
get a good bit of this knocked out. The granary is not taking a whole lot of grain right now, but the guy pretty much said he would try to get mine in there. But you can see this corn is so small, like I've shelled corn before that would be, ah oh, damn, see we're off a row here. I have shelled corn before that was uh, nearly as tall as the combine, like in the cab, it'd be like way up here. This corn is so, so small. You know, for something to consider here, to think about, which I'm, I am a, your standard modern farmer. I mean, here we are, we're shelling, that are rolling in there. And see that corn is just, just shelling on in there. Look at this, 63 bushel. It's getting up there, knocking on the 100. Hey, that's, that's what makes me happy to see some hundred and something. It's gonna go back down. I can tell this corn looks pretty sad right here. Going back down, see that? That right there is my yield. That's what it's cutting per acre. That's the moisture. Moisture is just a tad high for me. I need it to be, you want the moisture to be 15% or lower, preferably, but I gotta get these contracts filled. And so it is what it is, but Corn shelling 80 something, 85 right there, 81, 50, 120, it's all over the place. But the thing that I got to thinking about is this corn, if it, like the last field I just came from, it averaged 80 bushels. In my mind, that's basically, a, I mean, that's nearly a total loss. That farm had shelled 190 the last time I had corn on it. So you're talking over, I mean, more than half of a loss, more than half loss. I'm ex explaining that very confusingly. But it didn't even shell half as good as the previous time. There you go, that's a simpler way of putting it. And even considering that, people want to attack GMO the way we farm today. Well, I got news for you, an 80 bushel yield which to us is bad, is better than what they were getting organically back in the day. Like people want us to revert back to the old way of farming. Those guys were not getting, I mean, they, I don't even think they were averaging 80 bushel an acre. Their corn, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was getting like 40 bushel an acre or something. Somebody will quote me or, or uh, tell me how much it is, but I don't even think it was 80 bushel average. So our worst is still better than what guys used to get. Now, organic has come a long way. I don't want to sound like I'm just attacking organic here. I know some guys that do farm organic corn and they're making pretty decent yields now. They're still not shelling the, you know, the 200, uh, 200 plus bushels that we see in a normal year. Like this farm here, it actually shelled, I want to say it shelled almost right at 200 bushel, or 100, it was between 180 and 200 bushel the last time I had corn on it. So again, we're looking at a large difference from this year, because, I mean, like I said, shelling, shelling 80 bushel in areas, 40 bushel. I'm hoping maybe some of these long runs in the middle will get a little better, but I don't have great expectations because I did walk out in it. But uh, something to think about, man, the next time somebody's blasting uh, GMO crops to you, just keep in mind that it is, it's it's unsustainable right now. You know, I'm not saying that they won't somehow, I mean, it's weird to say because they're, they're essentially genetically modifying the crop by breeding it differently to try to increase the yields. So it's, you know, at what point does it become like non-GMO organic? When does that become GMO? That's a whole nother rant that I'm finding myself getting off on that you probably don't care that much about. But here you go, we're, uh, we're just trying to get these end rows all finished up. You can see it comes, it kind of becomes a mess here in spots. When I run into this where there's not really any rows, I have to just let the header down all the way and try to, try to pick them up. But yeah, this farm so far is doing about what I expected, which I'll be honest, if it shells, if 
if it shells 80 bushels, that will have surpassed what I thought it would do. And in all honesty, I came into this field figuring it was probably going to shell about 40 because the corn just looks, it looks really questionable in spots. I do love farming corn though. It's coming in there really good. I've done made two end passes all the way around. Still haven't had to unload. My alarm just went off saying three quarters full. That's that's pretty bad. So, but you know it is what it is. So again, this is 65.99 decal. I love this variety of corn. I've had really good luck out of it, but it just don't have. I mean, I can't even say I don't have the tolerances for it because this was just a brutal year on corn all together. Um, and when I say tolerances, they breed in certain tolerances to corns now, like some have very good drought tolerance. I don't think 6599 has a very good drought tolerance, but it's kind of their racehorse variety. It, it, you plant it on your best ground and you hope to get plenty of water and rain which we did not get. I actually, this farm was really wet. I had to come in and replant some corn too. It was super wet when I planted and then got super dry when it was pollinating. So that's farming folks. It's, you never know. You never know what's gonna happen. It's kind of a crapshoot. Look how short that corn is. I am out here, I mean, I'm in the field. This, this is where your good your good corn is. And right here, chilling like, no, oh, beacon, lighting beacon problem. 16, 16 bushels right there, 43. It's insane. I mean, it, it goes up and down, but it's just, it's really, I don't know. It's a, it's a serious bummer shelling it when it's like that. Okay. Here's my first first hopper on this place here. It's taken quite a few acres to get here. There's our unload, the old yellow button. Always started on low RPM. Then we're gonna throttle her up. Run her wide open. Let her eat. That should be a pretty good size hopper. I imagine but by now we would have already had a truckload <laughs> it's very sickening you know farming that's one of those things I mean I, I think that's part of why it's so stressful it's because it's just stuff you can't control it should start running out back here y'all can see some of the corn in there yeah and these about 400 bushels in a corn hopper. There it comes. There it goes. Running out of there. Alright. Just piling her up. Damn, that's perfect timing. There comes the purple truck. Let's come pulling in. They can get in here. <laughs> it's kind of a tight, tight fit. That's a heck of a driver we got there. Yeah. Oh man, he made it look easy. This is what corn ought to look like. See how tall that is? It's up in the 180s, 190s, 200. I mean, that, that's what you go for. It's almost as tall as the dang cab of the combine, it looks like. <laughs> if all of it would have been like that, that had been great. Which, what's frustrating about the weather is, this ground really has the potential to do about that. I mean, because it's, it's pretty much done it before. But, the cards did not play that way this time. So, this is the 10 acre part. It's the same farm, but this is a piece of uh, across a creek from it. 
and it always does phenomenal. I, you know, and I, I can't say why. I have soil sampling done. I've tried to figure out what the difference is. It's it's kind of a little lower ground. You know, I don't know if that's what it is, but I mean the corn over here is just you can see how much bigger it is. It's a lot bigger than over there. And it always takes a minute to rise up. You see, it's getting on up there, 149, 150s. That's, I had a feeling this field over here would, would do that. I'm really glad, you know, I, <laughs> I need all the yield I can get, but it's just crazy the difference between across a creek. That over there, I don't know what it's averaging yet. I haven't figured it up yet, but this over here is probably gonna average double if not more what that did literally right across the creek. It's crazy. Truly crazy. One of life's great mysteries. But I'm gonna knock this out. It's 10 acres. Get this knocked out. And uh, that I don't know if we'll, we'll may we may try to move the next farm. I'm not real sure how froggy everybody's feeling. Alright, I don't know if you guys can will be able to tell on camera here, but this corn is good right here and you're about to see a difference maybe you'll be able to tell it all right see how it's kind of yellow looking all right now this corn suddenly it looks really gray ah, it's gonna be a miracle if it show up on camera but you can even tell the leaves look different and it's it's like you can see how it's just disintegrating in the air look at it look the yields just going down there's no corn on it that's what's killing you. It went down to zero, and I can't even hear any corn going through the machine. So it's it's super weird. It, it'll go from 200 bushel corn, that real pretty, like the stalk looks good, and you can see the big ear on there. It goes from that to that gray, kind of rotted looking stalk, and, and I, there's no corn on it. Well, that's a wrap on uh, today's video. Very good day shelling corn. The corn is probably going to end up averaging first field about 80. Uh, that second field altogether is looking like it's going to be around 75 bushel acre, which is just is terrible. You know, uh, on the low end of the spectrum, I shoot for about 120 bushel of the acre average. So 120 is that on a normal year, I'd be very disappointed with 120. Whenever I went into this year, I actually was planning on shelling about 200 bushel an acre, put enough nitrogen down, was all in for 200 bushel an acre corn. So 80 bushels, 75 uh, bushels, that's just, that's terrible. But uh, it comes with it. Farming has its challenges and that's just part of the process. So that's the episode for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please hit the like button, hit subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought, any questions you have. Uh, I'd love to hear them. Uh, any videos you want to see in particular. I've had some people say they'd like to know like a tour of my service truck and what I carry. That'd be fun. I'll do that. And uh, got some other stuff, some other ideas brewing. So let me know what you'd like to see and uh, appreciate it, guys. Thank you.